It's Judy, your Wayward Muse. Not long ago, a new subscriber suggested that I do a video on something I tweeted about, a desert garden that was immune to critters. So I thought about it and thought, well, why not? And along with that, I thought I would include other tips for desert survival. And Neo, <laughs> you'll see a coyote outside or something. Not long ago, something happened to me that I thought would never happen to me. I got bit slash stung by a scorpion. Now, everything they tell you about scorpions, scorpion stings are true. They hurt. The pain is extreme. Anyway, they tell you not to bother going to the doctor. And there's a good reason for that. There's nothing a doctor can do unless you have an allergy to it, which you would probably know after the first hour or so because it would become unbearable and you couldn't breathe. So let me tell you what the best remedy for scorpion bite, scorpion sting is. It's a, I don't know why I can't ever remember what these things are called, paste, paste, paste. It's a paste of turmeric, turmeric. This is a common spice. They use it a lot in Indian cuisine. And you can use it for a paste. All you do is just mix it with water till you make a paste. And you put this on the area of the bite and it is a godsend. It will definitely take the edge off the pain. To reduce the swelling, you just want to put on ice. But there's no reason to go to the doctor because they would just do the same thing, put on ice and tell you to go home and take ibuprofen. But I had it for about a day, the symptoms. I couldn't walk on it. All I could do was just lay there in agony until we looked up home remedies and we found out about the turmeric paste. Now you can also make a paste out of garlic powder. It works. I don't know if it works as good, but it does work. So that's my remedy for scorpion sting, scorpion bites. And this is the tiny bark scorpion. I'm going to put it down here on the video somewhere and show you how it compares to the giant hairy scorpion, which I've done a video on with my own composition. So I suggest you check that out if you haven't already. And you can see how those are. Those are much, much, even though they're bigger, they're much more gentle. Their venom is not poisonous, at least not to humans. Scorpion bites rarely cause death, only in extreme cases, like very young people, very old people, and those with allergies. So it's something you'll get over, but it's just, that's, I'm just telling you this, because I've never had as bad a pain <laughs> I did when I got bit by the scorpion. So that's my tip for surviving a scorpion bite. Thanks. All right. Now it's time for the part on what to do if your car breaks down. Well, the best thing you could do is to prepare for it. And I always make a cool pack. Doesn't matter how far I'm going. Y'all be quiet. My dogs. But anyway, these are the things I put in my cool pack. It's a little mini cooler that I got from the National Wildlife Association. And I have several and I, I, I use it for mainly for this. So you put an ice pack in there. And I like to put a frozen bottle of water in there simply for the fact that if you are out in the desert, it might melt by the time you get wherever it could melt. So it'll be great cool water or you could always use it as a pulse point cooler. And then I put a regular bottle, bottle of cool water in there. And then heat makes me nauseated. Also, I have a medical condition that makes me nauseated if I get in pain. So I always put a soda in there. And then a spray bottle. These are the best things for if your AC goes out in your car, and then, well, that's it. That's basically what I put in my cool pack. And I take it with me wherever I go. It doesn't matter how far I'm going. It is always in the vehicle because my vehicle has broken down before in the summer. It's not very pleasant. It could get up to triple digits here. Do not rely on this. 
do not. For one thing, it may not be charged. Even if it, even if you have a charger, a portable charger like this, this is a great little thing. It's made by Eco, Eco X Gear. It's one of those companies that makes great things for the outdoors, Wi-Fi speakers and whatnot. You have to have one of these, a cord. So that's just too much technology to have to carry around. Um, and if you do have one of these, best not to have a smartphone. You don't need a smartphone. This is less than $20 a month, and it gets the job done with smartphones. They can track you, and they cause brain cancer. So this you can, um, well, you just don't need anything else. So, But anyway, don't rely on this. It's a great thing to have, and you should have it. But the most important thing, the thing that's really going to keep you alive, especially if you're some way, somewhere where it's difficult for help to get to you, even if you're able to call them, you got to have this. All right? Okay. All right, now part three. How to do a critter-proof desert garden. Retired engineer Bell Martholomew founded and developed the square foot gardening method in the 1970s and wrote the definitive book about it. He designed it to grow the maximum amount of plants in the minimum amount of space. You spend less time weeding and are able to rotate and diversify your crops more easily. No moving around because you can sit or kneel right in the same place the whole time. You also use less water for obvious reasons. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about how to build it because others have done that much better than I could and I've listed the videos below in the description. Now the critter proofing is a different story. We have so many burrowing animals, particularly ground squirrels and rabbits, that it's impossible to keep them out of any garden unless you have special critter proofing. They will dig under or climb over at any cost. The only way to keep them out is to prevent those two behaviors. And this is how we did it. My husband, John, adapted a technique he saw Australian farmers using and then added his own innovations. To keep them from digging under, you have to install a vertical quarter inch wire mesh buried at least a foot and a half straight down with another foot and a half going straight out across horizontally into the garden underneath the fencing. To keep them from climbing over, you install an upside down plastic gutter that people ordinarily use for roofing. You put that on a small piece of wood that juts out from the top of the fence. It may look weird, but it does the job. And that's all there is to it. Now, in order to keep birds out, you need to install higher posts at each end of the garden that you can use for attaching plastic netting for draping across the garden. This might complicate getting in and out a little more, but it's just like pulling back a shower curtain and you get used to it. Now you can't fight mother nature. Some clever critters will try and get in like this Eurasian dove that put a nest up there, but that obviously didn't work out. Plus we had a spade foot toad that emerged from the garden, but he'd probably been buried down there forever until he came up out of the dirt. But let's get back to the garden. What you're about to see are the results. They said it could not be done, but we did it. 2012 season and I'm in this garden and it's got I don't know cilantro something growing down there I have no idea snow peas and the huge stalks of artichokes look at those look at those things huge giant artichoke plant it's got the standard tomatoes, uh, different kinds of lettuces, uh, lavender, some type of a peas and peppers, lots of different kinds of peppers, a giant rosemary bush. Right down here as I'm stepping in here, it's got a beautiful little orange flower blooming. How do you like that? Beautiful little thing, huh? 
There are a lot of little flowers like that in here interspersed throughout the place. And the gorgeous lavender. I love the lavender, it's so beautiful. And I don't know what this stuff is, it's pretty. It's nice, pretty red stuff. More lettuce, oh, looks like some more cilantro. Tomatoes, some of these are uh, uh, grape tomatoes or cherry tomatoes. Here's uh, more of a lettuce plant that's blooming here. This thing is getting pretty tall. I have no idea what it is. It's up to my waist. Um, oh, looky here. Look what we've got. We do got some beautiful, 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 beautiful. John taught me how to see if they're ready. Well, I guess it could stand another day. Oh, this one definitely looks like it's ready. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It's gorgeous. That's just gorgeous, isn't it? Look at that. Wowie zowie. This is a beautiful plant. I don't know what it is. Gorgeous. Beautiful kind of a turquoise blue, whatever it's doing. I'm just showing you. The uh, spring garden here of uh, this beautiful, gorgeous April morning. The sun coming up. Um, John's artichoke. The sunflower is trying to get through there. Artichoke blooms. And pretty orange flowers. And the cherry tomato plants. Okay. I don't know what it is. I think it's a spade foot. You can see its little feet. Ooh, 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 I'm about to let it go. There you go, little guy, little girl. I think it's a spade foot. It's safe in the garden. Dogs can't get to it. I just let them into a paradise. We'll see what happens. Cute little thing, huh? This is the garden today. Now, as you can see, the structure is held up real well. We just haven't held up that well. But that's just aging for you. So, if you live here or ever visit, I hope these desert survival tips for everyday living prove helpful. Thanks for watching and Happy